Hey everyone, in this video, I want to look at what this is, this pay as you go option that you'll see if you install Windows Server 2025. So it would be interesting to really dive in and explore what exactly this option is and when you would actually use it. Now, if we think normally for Windows Server licensing, we're used to a perpetual license. We have the idea that, okay, sure, I have a certain OS, I want Windows Server on it. And what ordinarily we do is we buy the license for Windows Server. So we pay our money and that license is good, well, to the end of time. It doesn't mean I'm gonna use it to the end of the time. It doesn't mean Microsoft will support it to the end of time, but it's my license and it is a perpetual. So that license is mine, I can leverage it. Now, if we think in a virtual world, if we're standard, that license gives us the ability to actually run two VMs running Windows Server as well. If I do data center, which is what we're typically gonna use in any kind of virtual environment, well, I get an unlimited number of VMs because I'm licensing for both these all of the cores in the box. So I get lots and lots of VMs, as many as I can fit on the box. Obviously, it wouldn't be infinite, but I can do as many as fit on that piece of equipment. And the whole point is I own that license. So I pay for the license and I can really do whatever I want for as long as I want. And then this cloud thing came along. So if we look at the cloud and that Azure model, so suddenly now, if we think we've got Azure, when you create a virtual machine in Azure, and I choose as the OS Windows Server, what actually happens here for that Windows Server license, I pay for the duration that that OS instance exists. So I'm using something called pay as you go, pay go. Now, obviously I could also use Azure Hybrid Benefit and leverage existing licenses that have SA, so I, I don't pay that. And we also would see that cost. Like if I jump over for a second, so if I actually go and look at the pricing calculator, and here I'm doing a Windows server operating system, well, you see that as part of the billing, there's the compute component of it, but there is also the OS component of it. So license is included and I'm paying this certain amount of money per month. If I picked Azure Hybrid Benefit, then I don't pay that. But I'm paying for the license as I am consuming it. Well, now there's a new option available for us. Now this new option is only available for Windows Server 2025. So now if I've got a Windows Server 2025, I have some choices. I have a new flexible pay as you go option or I absolutely just carry on doing this perpetual option. So nothing is happening to the perpetual option. It's not going away. It's not even intended that this would become the go-to. It definitely isn't, as we'll see. But I get now an option to do that. If we go and actually look, when I look at Windows Server pricing now, you'll see they have a whole section, traditional licensing or pay as you go. So in addition to regular perpetual, I can now do this option where I pay a certain amount per month, which they do if you terminate it, it breaks down to the, the hours you've actually used. But the key point here is you're only paying for what you need. So it is another choice you have available to you. Now, this pay as you go is good for very specific scenarios. Over a long period of time, you're much better off financially going with the perpetual option. This pay as you go really is designed that I'm not using data center. Because again, if this is a short term Windows Server 2025 and it's virtualized, if I have data center, I can create 
and delete VMs whenever I want. So I would still just be leveraging the perpetual license I had for Windows Server. This would be useful in a scenario where I don't have data center. So I'm not using data center. And maybe it's super short term project because I'm using standard or it's some bare metal and I don't have spare licenses. Or maybe it's in some burst scenario. And again, I don't have data center, so I have a limited number. In those scenarios, this is now another option to license the Windows Server 2025 OS, be it on premises, be it in another cloud, it, it doesn't matter. But I now have that choice, again, only for Windows Server 2025. This is not backporting. There were OS changes in Windows Server 2025 that let the Arc agent, because this pay-as-you-go, as you may have saw in the documentation there, depends on Azure Arc. So this OS is Arc enabled, so it will go and talk to the Azure control plane, so it becomes a known OS instance in Azure. And that's how then it can implement and perform this pay-as-you-go. So it really is specific to those very short-term burst scenarios where I do not have data center to cover that license. Now, because of this, because of this, this pay go, it just becomes part of your Azure bill. So it would show on my Azure bill, it would be part of my Azure commitment. Um, and it's really just great if I do have that flexibility requirement and I'm not one of the typical enterprises that just has data center and has everything covered anyway. Um, another scenario I guess could be if I'm working with a hosting scenario and with the host, I'm having trouble with the licensing of the Windows Server OS. Hey, this, this could be another option there as well. Now, as we saw, you're performing this as part of the OS installation. So as I go through the OS installation, I'm saying, no, no, I want to do a pay as you go. And at that point, it will just carry on through with the rest of the OS installation. Now you can pick standard or data center, desktop experience or server core, it doesn't care. The price is the same. So most of the time, obviously, you're going to go with the data center SKU, unless maybe at some point in the future you were intending to say, maybe I'm going to need this for a long time, at which point I would maybe switch it from the pay as you go to a perpetual license. So I would just go through and then it would just go and install the operating system as it normally would. And then it will, once it actually boots, I'll go and complete that Azure Arc registration. And then it will start using that pay as you go. And really the only difference I'll see as part of this is once that installation is complete, when I go and look at the licensing, it will actually show me, hey, you have used a digital license as part of your activation. So I set this use of the Paygo at installation time, or if I specified a product key that ended up not working, as long as it's not activated, I could then, once it's Arc enabled, then say, hey, I wanna go and leverage the Paygo. If it's already activated, it means I've already used the license, why would I now wanna go and pay for another one? I can do this management through the regular Azure SDKs. So I can use the portal, I can use PowerShell, there's various ways to actually go and leverage that. And if you're familiar at all with what they did with SQL, so SQL, hey, I can do a perpetual license, or they added the option to do pay as you go through Arc, talking to Azure, that's all this is. It really is just some customers had that scenario where, hey, it's not in Azure, but maybe it's, and it's not data center in another cloud or whatever they're doing or on-premises. And I just needed that very short-term use or that burst scenario. I didn't want to have to buy perpetual licenses. Well, hey, now I can just pay for it as part of my Azure license. That's really all this is. Now, what is super important with this, it is pay as you go. I'm paying for this while it's enabled for the OS instance. I think you get seven days for free initially, and then they start the billing on this. But as soon as you don't want this anymore, make sure you go and disable pay as you go. If you're gonna do something with this OS instance, if you wanna switch it maybe to a regular product key, you need to go in and disable pay as you go so you stop paying. Just stopping the OS is not gonna stop the billing for this. You have to go and disable the pay as you go, 
And then obviously the OS would become unactivated. So then you could go and use a product key or delete it, whatever you want to do. And that, that's really all it is. So we can go and actually jump back and let's see uh, how the progress is actually going on this. So now it's booted. I'm just gonna go and launch the Azure Arc setup to actually now get this talk into the Azure control plane. And of course I'm doing this manually, but I could script this, which is probably what I would do if I was using this in some burst scenario or some project. I don't wanna manually go and do this for all of my instances. And notice here it's got the licensing method. So again, this is just that pay as you go. And I'm done. Now when I go and look in the portal at my Azure Arc machines, I can see that new box. And what I should also see is this, this new pay as you go license, and I can select that. And notice it's telling me the activation is still in progress, it may take up to 10 minutes. So just let that complete. So now we can see it does show pay as you go license. And notice we also have this checkbox that I want to license it with pay as you go. If we jump back over to our virtual machine, if we actually go and look at our activation settings, it actually is telling us that it has been activated with a digital license. So we can see we are using the pay as you go and it will now just go to our bill. And again, if we were now wanting to stop paying for this, I need to go and just for the overview, it does also show you, hey, that my license type is pay as you go enabled. But I just go to the pay as you go little tile and I would unselect pay as you go with Azure. Hit confirm. It's telling me this machine will no longer be licensed. So, I need to make sure I then go and do something else with it. And I would go ahead and deactivate. And now again, it will go and communicate with the connected machine agent on the client and it will deactivate this machine and I'll be done. So that was it. I hope that was useful. I hope you really get the idea of it's an additional option to give you some flexibility. It is not gonna be by any means what most people will ever use. The perpetual license is the right thing in nearly all scenarios. It would only be, I don't have the data center for these on-prem instances, and I have some very short-term need, or I need some burst scenario. Well then, hey, I, I wanna just go and bill it against my Azure bill, consume against my Azure commitment for that small time. But do not forget, to go and disable it once you're done so you don't just keep paying for it. Hope that was useful. Until next video, take care.